and then put it out. You see this weight? Hmm. We have a little bit of a love-hate relationship. <sighs> It enjoys making me suffer, and it's not always the nicest to me. But I also kind of love it. Lots of you have asked us, how do we stay fit on the road? Well, the road to fitness is a fairly simple one, but most of you are not gonna like our answer. Eat smart and move more. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! Now, if you didn't click off from that, we're gonna break it down for you so that you can benefit. But don't worry, we're gonna keep it super sweet and simple because fitness doesn't have to be complicated. Okay, the first part, eat smart. Everyone says that, but what does it mean? Well, let's break it down into two simple rules. Decide once and have a routine. So what does decide once mean? Well, studies have shown that we have a finite amount of decision-making power every single day. So consider it like a fuel tank that fills up in the morning and every single decision you make pulls a little bit of fuel out of your tank. And this is why Steve Jobs wore the same outfit every single day. He understood this principle and wanted to remove one simple decision, what to wear, out of his daily routine so he had more power to make more important decisions. Now, how do you decide once with food? Quick shout out to our sponsor, Cuts. If you want to get some super cool workout gear like this, click the link below and use the code ROMRU. Okay, back to the healthy stuff. One of the most important things is figuring out what you don't want to eat. Now this is your weakness. Is it ice cream? Is it chips? I'm ice cream, Scott's chips. Whatever it is, don't have it in the house. Donate it, throw it away, just get rid of it. If it's in the house, you're gonna be tempted by it. And this is the same thing when it comes to the grocery store. If you don't wanna include it in your diet, don't buy it. Now, if you have ice cream or chips in your house and you see them, every time you see them, you're gonna to have to ask yourself, do I wanna eat that? And right there, that's a decision that you don't need to make. Ultimately, you wanna set yourself up for success, which means not having any tempting delicious foods around. Now this doesn't mean that you never get to have it, it just means that you might have to take a special trip to go get it. Okay, the second rule, have a routine. Now, we mainly eat the same thing every single day. Sounds boring, right? Well, not if you take the time to make every item just how you want it. So we have a wonderful cappuccino. Then we have some eggs. Usually it is an over-the-top breakfast burrito. Then we have a delicious green shake. And then dinner, it's kind of flexible. We vary it from day to day. Now, what does this do for us? One, it removes the decision-making process. So we don't have to decide what we're having to eat for every single meal. The other thing is it's consistent and it allows us to control the nutrients and caloric intake that we're consuming every single day. Come here, I'm gonna eat ya! So that is what we do with our diet. We made a plan that fits our needs and we removed all the most tempting foods. Now, a lot of you ask if we ever indulge in ice cream, chips, or have a cheat meal. Well, first of all, I like to call it a treat meal. And yes, we do indulge. Did somebody say treat meal? This guy and his chips, he loves them. <laughs> so one of the things that we do is we don't keep the things around. And that may mean paying a little extra to go to the ice cream shop or actually, you guys won't like to hear this, throwing away the leftovers of the Ben and Jerry's pint that you had the night before. How dare you. I know. <laughs> but uh, we are willing to pay the little extra to not have that around because I think the benefit in your health way outweighs the extra few dollars that you're gonna spend on the ice cream or the treats when you have to go pick it up on that special trip. Back to the original rules, eat smart and move more. We just covered the eat smart, let's talk about moving more. So few people really enjoy a typical gym workout, but everybody loves the way it makes them feel. Now, when we're on the road, it is easy to come up with an excuse of why not to work out. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's too windy. Ah, there's no way to work out, our neighbor's annoying, but you know what? You gotta figure out a way to get it done. So here are a few tricks and rules that help hold us accountable. One, 
you have to warm up. Now this is a rule that I've held myself accountable to because it tricks your brain. So often when we're sitting on the couch, we just don't want to get up. But once we put those workout clothes on, get warmed up, get to the gym, it's kind of easy to just finally do the workout. And now there have been a few times when I actually did all that and decided to go home. But you know what? That was okay because sometimes you gotta listen to the body. Oh, it's a deep bird. I did like a thousand of them. <laughs> oh, ow, I'm gonna cramp. Can we get some body oil? <laughs> So another rule that holds us accountable is to breathe heavy, but not always for that long. So I always say that if you have 10 minutes, which everyone does, you can get in the best shape of your life. Seven minute abs. I mean, think about it. When we're driving five to six hours a day and I get to a campsite, I do not want to do a long workout, but I do get in a 10 minute workout. Now, if you have 10 minutes, and I know that all of you have 10 minutes to dedicate to yourselves, even if that's just going for a walk, doing 10 minutes of push-ups, doing 10 minutes of air squats, whatever you can do, do it efficiently, breathe heavy, and it doesn't have to be for hours on end. And the last thing is, have a plan. Write down what you wanna do, if it's to work out three or four times a week, and actually write out your workouts, because when you get to the end of the day and you're tired and you're trying to figure out what to do for your workout, if you wanna work out, these are all decisions that you have to make when your brain is exhausted. So make these decisions when your brain is full. You know, Sunday afternoon, when you've got time and you're sitting on the couch, write these workouts down, set the plan, and be ready to go to hit the week at 100%. I, I sound kind of like Tony Horton right now. <laughs> Tip of the day, don't smash your face. Do your best and forget the rest. <laughs>So we get asked how we stay fit on the road all the time. And we threw it out to our followers on Instagram and we're gonna answer some of the questions that you guys had right now. All right, so first up, Stevie G Holla <laughs> asked, how do you motivate yourself? Now that's a big question that we get asked. And honestly, if you're gonna rely on motivation to work out, you're probably never gonna work out. You have to rely on your discipline you know, and rely on our accountability standards that we set, such as having a plan. If you say to yourself that you want to work out four to five times a week and you plan out four to five workouts for yourself, you're going to stick to that. So I disagree with Colette's on the fact of motivation. I, my rule that helps me get motivated is the rule of warming up. Because once you're at the gym, in your workout clothes and you're starting to get the blood flow at that point it's a lot easier to start the workout than when you're sitting on the couch so it's a combination of discipline and motivation because i know personally after a six hour drive with the airstream and i park i do not want to work out i really don't but i know that i will feel better afterwards so if i had set a standard for myself of saying i am going to work out when i get to my campsite i'm going to work out when i get to my campsite because the promises you make to yourself are the ones that are the most important. Next question. All right, next question. How often do y'all work out when traveling? This is from Karishma. So we probably work out four to five times a week on average. And that doesn't mean that we're always picking up the weights during those times. It could be a hike, it could be rock climbing. Sometimes it's as simple as just going on an evening walk, but we're always gonna be moving at least a little bit every single day. And we try to motivate ourselves to do some workouts four to five times a day. Sorry, <laughs> four to five times a week. Can you imagine? <laughs> Carly Glazer asked, when I travel, I wanna eat all the foods and drink all the drinks. That's my girl. How do you find balance? You don't. <laughs> that's, the, that's the perfect answer. When you're traveling and you're in Italy and you wanna eat the food and drink the wine, do it. It's when you get back home, you can relax a little bit. But the fact that we live on the road and live while traveling, we have to balance things a little bit more. But when we do go to those foodie destinations, you better believe that we indulge. I mean, the pizza, the pasta, the Aperol spritzes, you know we love it all. So yeah, treat yourself if you're on vacation and when you get back home, get back to it. And we're able to do that because we stick to a pretty strict regimen of eating, you know, the same thing every single day during the week. So if it's the weekends or at a location, you can have fun and indulge. Okay, Jogan Travels asked, do you follow a particular programming or do you make up your own? So we do follow a CrossFit style type of programming. 
But because we're limited to the equipment that we have, which is basically some dumbbells, kettlebells, and a jump rope, we have to make our workouts based on that. So some of the workouts that we base our workouts off of are inspired by CrossFit South Bay, which is our home box in Hermosa Beach. So oftentimes we'll look at their page and we'll link it here so that we can get some ideas of workouts to do. Um, some other people that I love to follow are the Movement Maestro. She always has fantastic workouts that you can do at home and at Jill Fit also has awesome workouts. So I love to get inspired by other creators and other CrossFits. Okay. Quincy Rowan asked, how many weights do you guys bring on the road? Dumbbells, kettlebells, etc." So we have, and the inventory is, one 50 pound kettlebell, two 55 pound dumbbells, one 40 pound dumbbell, two 25 pound dumbbells. That's it. Two jump ropes. Two jump ropes. Two yoga mats. Two yoga mats. Rings. Oh yeah, muscle up rings. Muscle up rings. And uh, we haven't used those too often. And we get creative too, because we'll be in a park and a park bench or a picnic table. You can do step ups, you can jump up on it, do box jumps. So it's all about using your surrounding space along with what we have. Yeah, I mean, I remember going to a playground with you and we were doing pull ups on the monkey bars. Uh, yeah, doing step ups on anything that you can step onto. I mean, you gotta get creative and, and use the surroundings that you have. Okay. Nicole BS22 asked, can you give us an example of what you eat in a day? I think we gave that earlier in the video. Did we? Yeah, I gave the exact thing. You said coffee. I said coffee? Oh yeah, egg burrito. Nicole, we've already answered your question. <laughs> okay, we got another question from Stevie G. Hala. Thoughts on keto to lose weight? So I did keto for about two weeks just to see how my body would react and a lot of research, listen to some experts about keto and whatnot. I don't believe it is a long-term solution, but I personally think that if you're looking to expand the knowledge of your own body and how it reacts to certain things, I recommend doing a keto diet for about two weeks to see what happens. And uh, I liked it because it actually showcased what foods I was eating that might have been heavier in carbs. And then when I got off the keto diet, I could then decide if I wanted to put them back in to my diet on a daily routine. I think that uh, keto can be beneficial, but it is not necessarily for everyone. And it's also very difficult to do while you're traveling. It ends up eating just a lot of hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, I think, first of all, you should definitely ask your doctor about that because it is very important to know what your body can handle and what it cannot. I know personally, it, we have both done keto, as Scott said, and. I really enjoy it, but I also know that with the amount of energy output that I have and the, the workouts that we do, I do have to supplement with some carbohydrates or else I feel a little bit depleted at the end of the day. So I think that does it for this edition of Staying Fit While on the Road, but we'll probably do this again. If you guys have any more questions, please put them in the comments below and uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. But as always, I'm Scott. <laughs> and I'm Colette. And we are Romero. And if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe below. Get out there, guys. Adios. <laughs>